Salazar's character received very different treatment from the developers in this remake than the other villains in the game did. Resident Evil 4 has four major antagonists, Osmond Sadler, Jack Krauser, Chief Mendez, and Ramon Salazar. In the remake, those other three antagonists have been given fuller backstories or more sympathetic motivations than they had back in the original release. For example, in the original, Sadler's past was a complete unknown, but in the remake he has been rewritten with a pretty extensive family past related to the worship of the Plaga. In the original story, Krauser was just a lackey of Wesker, but in the remake has been rewritten with new independent motivations that have nothing to do with Wesker, and a much more sympathetic backstory. Likewise, in the original, Mendez was just a monster, but the remake has rewritten him with a tragic backstory in which he was once a compassionate leader of the village, but was tricked into allowing himself and his village to be subjugated by the Illuminados. Following this pattern, you would expect the remake to rewrite Salazar's story too, give his character a more elaborate backstory, to make him more sympathetic, to give him some independent motivations besides merely being Sadler's stooge. But to my surprise, that is not the case. If anything, Salazar is actually even more evil and less sympathetic and less complex of a character in this remake than he was back in the original. In the original story, Salazar was a sickly and lonely child who had been manipulated by the Illuminato's cult. He was a true believer in the Illuminatus religion, and felt that he had to atone for his family's sin of sealing away the Plaga. He was a pitiful and weak character, who possessed no strength of his own and was nothing but a pawn of stronger men's ambitions. In the remake, Salazar's backstory is very similar. He was still a sickly and lonely and vulnerable child who was manipulated by the Illuminados in this version. But in addition to that, he was now also a petty, vindictive, and insecure child who enjoyed hurting others. Others. His new backstory has only made his character more evil, not more sympathetic like the other villains. But he does have some inner strength in the remake that he didn't have before. In the original, when he gets stabbed in the hand by Leon, Salazar balls like a little baby. In the remake, when he gets shot right in the face by Leon, all it does is piss him off. His boss battle has also been completely redone in the remake. He is way stronger, way faster, way more mobile, has way more attacks, and is way harder to beat this time around. It's a vastly improved boss fight, and it's a boss fight that matches his new character. So why didn't the writers give Salazar a more extensive backstory or more sympathetic motivations in the remake the way they did for every other villain? Why did they make a different choice with Salazar than they made with every other villain? I think the answer is very simple. This is something that I keep coming back to in my analyses, which is that Resident Evil 4 is an action horror video game first, and the story only exists to fuel or enhance the gameplay. All of these changes to the villains are about improving the experience of playing the game. Any improvements to the story itself are only secondary. For example, giving Sadler a more extensive backstory not only clears up some confusing and distracting plot holes, but it also adds a sense of grandeur and scale to your confrontation with him. When you finally defeat Sadler in the remake, you're not just defeating some random cult in rural Spain, you're defeating a centuries in the making plan for world domination. The final boss fight itself is more exciting with this added backstory. Or another example is Krauser. By giving Krauser more sympathetic motivations and a more interesting relationship with Leon, it makes those confrontations with him more exciting, more engaging, more compelling. I enjoyed the Krauser fights more this time time around, not just because they have been hugely improved mechanically, but because the new story makes the confrontations more interesting, adds emotional and narrative stakes that weren't there before. This is what I mean when I say that I think all of these changes to the story are designed to improve the gameplay. So let's get back to Salazar. I think all of the changes to Salazar's character were made in service of this boss fight. The developers knew they wanted to redo Salazar's boss fight to make him way stronger and faster and scarier in his final confrontation. Then it was the writer's job to modify his character to match that boss fight. The old Salazar's character does not match this boss fight. The old Salazar was too wimpy and cringing and weak. His backstory too pitiful to match a boss fight against a monster this freaking scary and crazy. That old wimpy character matched that old boss fight, where the only way he could become powerful was by merging with the Queen Parasite and one of his bodyguards. But even after that merger, all he could do was sit there stuck to the wall and get shot in the face over and over. But a character who is remorselessly evil, whose only motivation is power and a delight in causing suffering, that absolutely matches the scale and style of this new boss fight. And so that's the direction
direction the writers took his character. Now let's look at what we know about Salazar's backstory in the remake to see how the writers are crafting this character. I want to look at three files you can find in the castle section of the game. The first is titled Salazar Family Chronicle. The Salazar family line has come to an end. In order to cure Ramon's sickness, his mother Catalina invited the devil into our home. Inscribed is a brief history of the members that solidified this prestigious bloodline. First generation, Count Gregorio the Conqueror. Gregorio led his men to eradicate the evil that befell the castle. Recognized for his bravery, he was awarded the title of Count and entrusted to keep the demons sealed for generations to come. And then we're going to skip past a lot of these because as interesting as they are, they're not really relevant to Ramon's story. So let's skip to 7th generation, Count Diego the Severe. Similar to his predecessor, Diego was exceedingly strict. He was murdered at the hands of a devil. 8th generation, Count Ramon. His illness should have taken him. Alright, so here we get a full history of the Salazar family. The Salazar family's story begins with the Conqueror, who sealed away the Plaga Parasite beneath the castle. Eight generations later, by the time of Ramon Salazar, this once illustrious family has deteriorated. Unlike his famous ancestors, Ramon is sickly, weak, insecure, and vicious-minded. I think there's an implicit criticism of the old European aristocratic system here, of which Ramon is a horrific caricature. Ramon is a very literal representation of the rot and corruption inherent in that system. I think that this may have something to do with why Salazar wasn't given a sympathetic background like the other villains. To be frank, old world aristocrats are inherently unsympathetic characters. They are rich and their riches are entirely unearned. And they are famous and special for no reason other than being born into the right family. Someone should let Prince Harry know this. I'm tired of seeing your stupid face every time I go to the bookstore, dude. Unless the spare on that cover refers to me using your book's pages as spare toilet paper, no one cares. Go do something, man. Anyway, back to Resident Evil. There are two mentions of a devil in this family chronicle. First, a devil murders Ramon's father, and then Ramon's mother invites a devil in to save her son from his illness. I assume this devil refers to Osmond Sadler. Sadler himself must have murdered Ramon's father, and then manipulated his mother into allowing his cult to worm their way into the castle. Sadler has likely been manipulating Salazar since the latter was a child. I also want to draw attention to that final line, his illness should have taken him. In all of these files, Ramon Salazar is spoken of very poorly, more so than any other villain in the game. It seems like characters in the game hate Salazar in a way they don't hate Mendez or Krauser or Sadler. It seems like no one really respects Salazar. But of course they don't, he's an old world aristocrat. They are a fundamentally unlikable bunch, no one likes these guys. Do you hear that, Harry? No one likes you. Get your stupid face out of my bookstore, dude. The next note we're going to look at is titled Ramon's Confession. My lord, my benevolent father, bless the Salazar bloodline with an iron hammer. The founder of my family proclaimed the holy teachings of Los Illuminados evil and persecuted its followers. Not only that, he stole their most prized possession and sealed it below the castle. Blasphemy, insolence. How long have I suffered the shame of knowing that the same blood flows through my veins? Finally, the Day of Atonement has come. O oh, my beloved Lord Sadler, I shall release the holy plagas that were hidden under the castle. The time is now. With divine grace, the wicked shall be reborn as part of the flock, reborn as Ganado. They shall be my Lord's loyal servants. Nothing would please me more than to sit at my Lord's feet and bask in your splendor. I am your humble servant. You are my eternal light. To you I swear my unwavering allegiance. In this document, in his own words, Salazar expresses his feelings towards Sadler and the Illuminatus cult. And his feelings read to me as very genuine here. It seems like Salazar is a true and honest believer in the holiness of both Sadler and the Plaga. When Salazar refers to Sadler as my beloved Lord Sadler, I don't think that's just hyperbole. I suspect he really does love and worship Sadler, the man who he believes saved his life. Unlike Krauser, who only wants power, or Mendez, who is tricked into getting injected with the parasite, Salazar is the only one of these villains who is always a true believer in the religion of Los Illuminados, even before being injected with the parasite. Even before injection, Salazar was willing to do anything Sadler told him to. Alright, we're going to look at one final document before moving on. This one is called Housekeeper's Memo 1. I have failed you, my lord. 
I was unable to fulfill your final commandment and keep the boy from the path of wickedness. It caught a glimpse of Master Ramon's evil temperament during his younger years. When he discovered a servant mocked him by uttering Pulgarcito behind his back, he summoned her to his private chamber. After forcing her to kneel before him, Ramon doused her face with a vial of vitriol he pulled out of his pocket. The young master watched with glee when the servant writhed in agony as the skin melted from her face. His twisted grin still haunts my dreams to this very day. As time passed, Ramon's treachery only deepened, and that infernal cult soon learned they could prey upon his vulnerable heart. Curse the fiends. They manipulated Master Ramon and turned him into their puppet. Worst of all, they've managed to use him to unleash Las Plagas that the Salazar family has fought so long and hard to keep sealed away. Lord Diego, rest assured I intend to watch over Master Ramon until the very end. Whatever fate may befall us, as a faithful servant of the Salazar family since birth, it is my duty and my penance to you. Here we see that Salazar was always a piece of shit. It wasn't just Sadler's influence or the parasite that made him as evil as he is today. He was always evil. When a servant mocked him, he threw acid in her face. And then as her face literally melted, he watched on in glee. That she was mocking him at all is further evidence that literally no one respects this guy, even his own servants. The servants call him Pulgarcito. I had to look this up because I had no clue what it meant. And it does come up again during Salazar's boss battle. Pulgarcito literally translates to small thumb. Pulgarcito is the name of the Spanish version of the Tom Thumb fairy tale. Tom Thumb was a story about a little itty bitty boy who was no bigger than his father's thumb. In the story, Tom is kind of a piece of crap, like he literally gets eaten and then pooped out of a cow's ass at one point in the story. So not a flattering nickname, and one that strikes right at all of Salazar's insecurities. He is so insecure that he is incapable of simply laughing off the insult. To protect his fragile ego, he has to retaliate in the the most gruesome and vicious way possible. Salazar's backstory paints a picture of a total piece of crap, who no one liked or respected, who enjoyed the suffering of others and was probably manipulated and used by Sadler since a very early age. Sadler is by far the least impressive and most reviled villain in the game. That's his role in the story. Sometimes all a villain needs to do to make a story work is to be totally unlikable, to be hated by everyone, and the writers perfectly accomplished this with Salazar. Whereas I felt a little bad when Mendez and Krauser fell in battle. I felt nothing but satisfaction at Salazar's end, and that's a sign of effective writing. Side note, the family servant who wrote that note also suffered a tragic fate. Following his master, he was injected with the parasite, and I believe he went on to create those annoying giant bugs that infest the castle, and later transformed his own body into some horrific shape. His loyalty led him down a path of total darkness. Next, let's watch each of Salazar's appearances in the game, to see how the writers continue to craft this very hateable character through cutscenes. Here's the first one. A most warm welcome to my castle. Such a pleasure to finally make your acquaintance, Mr. Kennedy. Who the hell are you? Me? Oh, please, call me Ramon, and allow me to get straight to the point. I would like you to hand the girl there over to me now. Yeah, fat chance, Ramon. The girl's just fine. With me. Mr. Kennedy. Mr. Kennedy. How novel. Nonetheless, you see, the girl must be ours. But the girl has the very source. Your United States and then the entire world shall overflow with his grace. For that is the iron wheel of Master, the most holy, Lord Sadler. So then, you will comply, yes? Never! You heard the lady. How unfortunate. Do make sure our guest feels at home, now that he has chosen death.
In spite of how unlikable he is, Ramon's character is really fun. He is flamboyant and theatrical. To make up for his small stature, his performance is huge. He looks and sounds completely ridiculous. His outfit is something out of another century. It has so many frills. Look at all those frills. He acts like a Saturday morning cartoon villain. I feel like Salazar would fit neatly into a Donkey Kong game. Like he and King K. Rule could definitely be friends. They both have that same cartoonish over the top totally unsubtle villain style. His character is a total contrast to Chief Mendez. Mendez was so quiet, but Salazar will not shut up. I also really like his visual design in the remake. With those bulging black veins all over his sickly pale skin, he looks so gross. His design in the original was mostly just silly looking, but in this remake, his design is genuinely grotesque. It makes me uncomfortable just to look at him. I'd like to draw some attention to Salazar's physical positioning in this scene. He is way up on top of this balcony, while Leon is far below him. Salazar is the only villain who introduces himself this way. Mendez, Krauser, and Sadler are all down at ground level in their first scenes. They are all face to face with Leon. They are all confident enough in their strength that they are comfortable doing that. However, Salazar is insecure and he needs to artificially prop himself up above others to boost his little ego, which ties into his next appearance, so let's watch that now. <laughs> Salutations, Mr. Kennedy. Are you ready to hand over the girl? Not this guy again. I'm taking the liberty of preparing some entertainment for you. Without further ado, the gallant knight protects the princess fair. Oh. Salazar spends a lot of time talking to Leon through this primitive PA system. Unlike every other villain, Salazar isn't even willing to meet with Leon in person most of the time. Again, because Salazar is insecure. He has to puff himself up artificially with height and distance. Also note those lines about the gallant knight protecting the princess fair. This is going to become a running theme in Salazar's dialogue going forward, and particularly during his boss fight. Salazar constantly speaks about his conflict with Leon as if it were a part of a performance. This is how he sees the world. Everything is a game to him. He's just here to enjoy himself. Everyone else exists for his personal entertainment, and the greatest entertainment of all for him is to watch the suffering of those he believes are lesser than him. Let's watch the next scene. Ashley! Leon, stop! No! Don't come any closer! Are you hurt? Watch out! Please, do continue. Do not resist, my dear. It serves only to make you suffer. All the worse. Please, please. You sick! Despedimos, Señor Kennedy. Once again, note the positioning of the characters in this scene. Salazar always has to place himself physically above and away from other characters, in a way that other villains in the game don't. The other villains don't need these kinds of theatrics to express their authority, but Salazar does because he is intrinsically weaker than them. For how silly Salazar can often seem, this scene does contain some genuine horror. Ashley being forced to drink that disgusting black liquid is very uncomfortable to watch, and so is that close-up of Salazar's equally disgusting face. The developers squeeze more horror out of Salazar's physical appearance than any other villain in the game. None of the other villains have really grotesque appearances, at least not in their human forms. Even Sadler, with his parasite head, doesn't look as gross to me as Salazar's design does. More than any other villain in the game, Salazar's spiritual rot is reflected in his grotesque physical appearance. His next scene is a very short one. You are nothing, if not unyielding, Mr. Kennedy. However, I'm afraid it ends here. 
Expel this intruder! You already know what I'm gonna say here. Positioning. Once again, Salazar places himself above, away, and out of reach of Leon. Once again, he is unwilling to face Leon himself and instead sends his minions to fight in his place. Let's jump straight into the final scene now. And so, I have delivered the girl to you as promised. Do tell our lord to not forget the loyalty of his servant, Ramon. Such a fool, Mr. Kennedy. To have been bestowed with Lord Sattler. You talk too much. Failed! You vulgar! Utterly uncivilized! Oh, grow! I think it's notable that Salazar is delivering Ashley not to Sadler himself, but to Krauser. And then afterwards he has to say, Hey, make sure Sadler knows it was me. Don't forget about me. This makes me think that even Sadler doesn't respect Salazar. He's not even willing to grace Salazar with his presence. Because no one respects a stooge, even if it's your own stooge. Stooges are contemptible as an archetype, just like old world aristocrats. And you know who I'm talking about. Next, notice that little bit when Salazar puts his gross hand on Ashley's face. This is a very typical sort of scene in horror media. The gross, disgusting monster physically defiling the beautiful, pure young maiden in some way. The earlier scene where he forced her to drink the black liquid was of the same type. This sort of scene plays out in hundreds of horror novels, films, and video games. It is everywhere. It is rooted in some very old ideas about the purity of maidens, in the horror of that purity getting befouled. I love how Leon is so over Salazar's theatrical bullshit that he just shoots him mid-monologue. Leon actually shoots both Mendez and Sadler in other parts of the game too, but they don't care. They barely react, it doesn't matter to them. They are confident in their strength. Salazar, who is so insecure, who cares so much about the appearance of power, is mortified. He starts complaining about the vulgarity of the act. And then of course Leon just shoots him again. The boss fight that follows is phenomenal. This is such a tremendous improvement over Salzar's fight in the original. I know there is some debate over which is the better game, the original or this remake, and I don't think it really matters since you can easily play and enjoy both of them. But this boss fight against Salzar I think is one of those places where the remake is undeniably a huge jump above the original. In the original game, Salzar merges with this wall monster. Any kind of just sits there while you dodge his tentacles and shoot him in the face. In this remake, Salazar is flying all over the place. He's like freaking Speed Racer. He is so fast. The fight is so much crazier and more hectic and more dynamic. I really, really like it. Something I've noticed on a second playthrough is that all of these villains are really talkative during their boss fights. They all seriously will not shut up while you're fighting them. Even the otherwise silent Mendez has a lot to say during his fight. Salazar are is no different. He might be the most chatty of the villains during his fight, though they all love to hear themselves talk. There's a lot of competition here for Chatty as Kathy. I actually like how chatty they are. It gives each villain a lot of extra space for character development, for them to discuss their motivations or express their temperament, without it getting in the way of the gameplay. During his battle, Salazar spends a lot of time talking about this imagined performance he thinks he and Leon are putting on together. This obsession with stories and fairy tales actually mirrors another character in the game, Luis. Luis also constantly compares himself and his actions to a fictional story, except in his case it's Don Quixote. In both cases, the characters behave as if they are living out a fictional story, not taking real life seriously enough until they are forcefully knocked out of their fantasies by some abrupt and violent act, and finally have to reckon with reality. With Luis, it's the knife in the back from Krauser, and with Salazar, it's this battle with Leon. During the battle, Salazar actually assigns Leon the role of 
both Paul Garcito, Tom Thumb, in their shared performance. Remember, this was the nickname that his servants assigned to Salazar, which he hated because it hurt his fragile little ego. He hated it so much that he melted a woman's face just for muttering it in his presence. With that context, two things are happening when Salazar refers to Leon as Paul Garcito. Firstly, it's the worst insult he can think of. He hates that name more than any other, and now he hates Leon just as much, and for the same reason, his wounded ego. Secondly, if Salazar can crush Paul Garcito here, in this bizarro story he's made up for himself, then he probably thinks he can sort of metaphorically crush that insecurity within himself. If he can win this battle against Paul Garcito, his ego will never be threatened again. Of course, it doesn't work out. Salazar ends up being barely even a footnote in Leon's story. He dies pathetically begging for help from Sadler, who doesn't respect or care about Salazar at all, who is only ever using Salazar as a meager means towards much more grandiose ends. And so, Salazar's pitiful life ends as miserably as it began.